Tonight on Command School, CNC3 designer Jason Bender called it a noob apocalypse. Where did David and Raj go so horribly wrong? Plus, I've got some Steel Talents tricks for you in part two of my sub-faction breakdown, and we showcase not one, not five, but six of your strategies in our Command School Honors Spectacular. Summer vacation may be right around the corner, but this school is still in session. You're watching Command School. I'm Greg Kasavin. Last episode, I asked for your Kane's Wrath strategies, and you delivered. Our crack team of writers and strategists combed through dozens of submissions to bring you our favorite six later in the show. But I want more. If you've got a great strategy, save the replay and email it over to commandschool at ea.com. Add Telestration and a voice commentary track for extra credit, and always include a brief description of the strategy in the body of your email. Before we get into the strategies, let's kick it off with some tips on Telestration, voice commentary, and battle casting in for noobs only. Battle casting automatically uploads your match to our website so that an unlimited number of players can watch it live or from the archives. To battle cast a match, host an online game and click broadcast at the top. Check broadcast game and give it a name and description, then you're good to go. Tape delay lets you set when the match is available to watch on our website. At least 10 minutes is recommended so your opponent can't see behind enemy lines and watch the battle cast on another machine while you play. But what's next? Head over to commandandconquer.com and click the battle cast tab. You'll need to log in with the same EA account you use to play CNC online. Here you can look at live, scheduled, or archived matches. You can also search by a number of criteria like date played, ranked or unranked, player or match name, rating, map, skill level, or whether or not the match was commentated. Find a match that looks good and click on it. Red matches require the Kane's Wrath expansion. Here you can see the match details, player stats, and results. Clicking View Match will automatically launch the game and load the match. You can even watch games played on custom maps. The map will download before the game plays. When you finish watching the match, you'll be asked to rate the game in the commentator. Those things help the best matches rise to the top. But the fun doesn't stop there. You can also click Download on any match within our system to add a voice commentary track. Save it in your Command & Conquer Replays folder in My Documents, choose Multiplayer, then Replays from within the game, and check Add Commentary. When the game loads, clicking the Telestrator tab will let you draw on the screen, just like we do in Battlecast Primetime. Click the eraser or press Delete to clear your markings. If you have a mic, set it to Voice Activated and everything you say will be recorded as part of your commentary. Here are a few commentary tips from the pros. First, introduce yourself, the players, and the game. Then inform your viewers they can switch to commentator at the top of the screen to see things through your eyes. You may want to give a quick tour of the map while the players set up, battleground reconnaissance style. Then talk about build orders, attack groups, formations, and strategies. The most important thing is to just keep on talking. Watch the pros on televised sporting events or watch us on Battlecast Primetime to try to mimic their enthusiasm, insight, and sense of humor. When you're finished with your commentary, just click save. The replay file complete with voice commentary and telestration will be saved in your My Documents folder. Email it on to your friends or post it to our forums. Now it's time for some Steel Talons tips in Casual One. The Steel Talons GDI sub-faction is reminiscent of Tiberian Sun era GDI. They have no sonic weaponry or zone troopers, but instead have loads of railgun based weaponry and garrison potential. First, let's talk garrisons. Early game, Steel Talons can garrison their harvesters or, like all GDI, foxholes made with the rifleman's dig in ability. Mid game, they have mobile repair transports which can attack and the mighty versatile hammerhead. Late game, their upgraded juggernauts, called behemoths, have a garrison spot too. With so many garrison choices, it's a little upsetting that Steel Talons only have four types of infantry riflemen, rocket squads, engineers, and grenadiers. There are no snipers, zone troopers, or commandos for this sub faction. But don't be discouraged, there's still a lot of potential here. First, you can hide engineers in any or all of these units. Okay. Many players, especially in GDI mirrors, won't notice a harmless harvester unloading an engineer until it's too late. Building captured. You can also use hammerheads as free call for transport for your engineers. Or try keeping an engineer in each behemoth. Right before it's killed, evacuate the engineer and let the behemoth fall. You can instantly recover it. 
if your engineer rush is successful and you unlock another faction's tech tree, or you're playing with an ally, these garrisons become even more powerful. Put a Black Hands rocket militant upgraded with Black Disciples and Purifying Flames into a hammerhead, and that chopper will have an anti-infantry turret, a garrison-clearing flamethrower, and anti-air rockets. Plus, all three of those weapons are great against tanks. Or have a cultist, prodigy, or mastermind mind control unit or structure, and then garrison the cultist, prodigy, or mastermind into a heavy harvester or behemoth to protect it. If you're using a prodigy, you can grab a unit or structure, teleport a short distance away, and teleport a heavy harvester to you for added armor while you escape. Precious cargo. Steel Talons also have access to the Titan as soon as they build a war factory. This powerful tank can crush enemy vehicles or harvesters just by walking over them. It can also be upgraded with railguns along with mammoth tanks, guardian cannons, and even unpacked rigs. If you have a tech center, you can use the railgun accelerator to shorten the time between shots by a third for a short amount of time, but this does cause them to take a third of their total hit points and damage. Don't use this on a wounded battalion, as this damage can kill them. Because of the damage taken, you'll want to have them near a mobile repair transport or rig. Oh, and speaking of mobile repair transports, did you know they repair damaged buildings for free? There are a few other upgrades worth noting for the Steel Talons, too. Hard Points increases an Orca or Firehawk payload by 50%, researched at the airfield. And Adaptive Armor allows you to manually increase your Mammoth or Titan's armor and make them immune to EMP effects. Remember, you can't choose to activate it after the EMP hits, so when you hear that shockwave artillery or EMP center sound effect, be sure to activate Adaptive Armor. In fact, you may want to have it active all the time. It increases health by 50%, but only decreases the rate of fire by a third. Unless you're trying to do a lot of fast damage, that's quite a bargain. If you've got a great Steel Talons tip, email it to me. We've got six great Command School Honors strategies coming up. But first, we interrupt this episode to bring you a special edition of Noob School. A few weeks ago, David and Raj faced off on Black's Big Battle in what the devs have nicknamed Noobstock 2008. Let's take a look at some of the things you can learn from these players. First off, scouting is key. If Raj had scouted, he would have seen David's vulnerable ant line of engineers or hidden bases in the corners. Also, when you scout, use cheap infantry and not stealth epic units. Next up are silos. One of the reasons they're in the game at all is just to remind you that you need to spend your money. Don't waste time and money on silos when you should be spending that money on building units. Another important point is expanding. David chose to expand with expensive MCVs, when in fact a few surveyors, properly protected, would have done the job just fine. He definitely didn't need those four build cubes. Raj, on the other hand, didn't expand at all until late in the game. If David had scouted and realized this, he probably could have delivered the death blow a lot faster. That's not to say that David was completely in the wrong. There's a lot of money on this map and it's huge, so expanding to the corners and turtling can be a viable strategy. Greg and Jason didn't have time to break down the stats in the last episode of Battlecast Primetime, but they definitely tell an interesting story. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the stats and find out how Dave was able to pull off this unprecedented victory. Uh, start out by looking at the units graph. You can see here at about the 14-minute uh, mark, Dave has a ton of units, but Raj comes in there with that Redeemer and just takes them all out with that Rage Generator. And Rage was generated as Dave then built a bajillion new units to counter Raj's not-so-many units. So over here at the Structures tab, we can see that um, David pretty much thought he was playing the single-player campaign until the middle here, until he hit the top of the chart, couldn't build any more structures, forcing him to build units. And you may be asking, how is this even possible? Well, you look at the resource graph and it becomes pretty obvious. I mean, look at the delta between these two lines. It's just Dave constantly outpacing Raj throughout the entire game, just has way more money than Raj could ever hope to counter. So on the stats screen, that's reflected by the uh, 29, almost 30 minute session length, about 27 of which were Dave building his base. Down here are the favorite unit, Mutant Marauder and Confessor Cabal, both heavily used by the pros at the top of the charts, or not. And then we have um, a 0.66 and a 0.63 kill to death ratio. That means that both of them lost more units than they killed. <laughs> both of them. Where I get a little confused is in the few brilliant moves David took to win the game. I don't think sending eight engineers into Raj's trap tip spikes was a mistake. He 
He saw one blow and immediately recognized the potential to cut off Raj's economy, especially since David knew he already had the corner fields. Then he deployed two temples of Nod, one of which was a decoy and two essentially undefended Everybody decoy bases, started. before charging in with a ridiculous army, forged from six production queues to the undefended rear entrance of Raj's base. I mean, it almost feels like David intentionally made some noob mistakes to cover up for serious skills. Not very characteristic of the Silverman I helped train. Well, congrats on a solid, albeit strange, victory, David. Uh, post your thoughts on this match in the Command & Conquer TV boards at commandandconquer.com. Now it's time to hand it over to six of you for our deluxe rapid-fire edition of Command School Honors. Our first strategy comes from Pill for the Reaper 17 subfaction. You need a tech lab to build a warp chasm, which means as soon as you have your epic unit, you can use the phase field support power. So, build an Eradicator Hexapod and try to get it as close to your enemy as possible before he catches on. Then phase field the epic unit and use it to crush tanks and harvesters. This next tip was submitted by The Neighbor for the Marked of Cain. If you build a power plant in Hand of Nod, then cue the Awakened, you can have your first squad in 15 seconds and an additional one every 5 seconds after that. On a small map like Barstow Badlands, set your rally point to the enemy's side entrance and march them one by one up to his conyard before having them EMP it. They'll arrive once every 5 seconds, potentially keeping your enemy's build queue offline for 50 seconds while you build a war factory and some rocket bombs. This one's risky, though, since it won't take much anti-infantry fire to finish you off. Zeppelin sends in this Zocom tip, which could really work for any faction. Rather than expanding to a TIB field, send your protected surveyor behind your enemy's base and build a barracks or two. Crank out rocket squads and engineers to overpower your enemy and take over his base, being sure to target anti-infantry defenses and vehicles first. Our fourth strategy is for Vanilla Nods, submitted by Tahai Rez. Once you've got an operations center, put six engineers into three Reckoners. Yes, Stealth them with either a disruption pod or a cloaking field, Reckoner. and get them just out of sight of the enemy. Then use a radar jamming missile to rush in and unload your engineers away from anti-infantry defenses. Be sure to avoid stealth detecting units like pit bulls, seekers, or attack bikes. Grab his crane, conyard, war factory, tech lab, and anything else you can manage. Once his radar is back online, he'll be shocked to find half his base sold off. Now here's a very gutsy strategy from the Betrayal for the Steel Talons. As you know, heavy harvesters have a garrison spot, and GDI conyards give an engineer when sold. I think you could guess where this is going. Build a refinery, sell your conyard, and load the engineer into your harvester. Sneak him into the side of your enemy's base and go for his conyard. You'll either win or lose in about 30 seconds of playtime. Not a strategy for the faint of heart. Our final tip is from Dennis for Traveler 59, and I have to admit, this one is clever. You'll need a stasis chamber, technology assembler, and nerve center, so it's definitely a late-game tactic. Build a prodigy and scout your opponent's main base with buzzards or storm riders, then send your prodigy to an untapped expansion field. Once you can see into your enemy's base, make a wormhole from the expansion field to your enemy's conyard. Send in the prodigy, mind control the conyard, pack it up, and send it and the prodigy back through the wormhole. Unpack it at your new base, and voila! You've just expanded without an explorer or drone ship, and stolen one of your opponent's build queues as well have a few refineries already queued to add insult to injury. Dennis also points out that you can use the Teleport MCB Allies ability unit. on your Prodigy to move your own packed up building. drone ship to any location on the map, building. unpack it for build radius, Please. drop a refinery or warp sphere while your Prodigy complete. runs home, Our and then teleport the packed up drone ship back to your main base. Yeah. Brilliant! To get your strat featured on Command School, save the replay and email it to us at commandschool at ea.com. Before we go, it's time for the GameReplays.org Tip of the Week. The Tip of the Week, brought to you by GameReplays.org. As we mentioned in our Steel Talons breakdown, they have access to a unique support power called Railgun Accelerators. This All ability right. comes with your tech center, and although it's always visible on your sidebar, it won't be castable until you research railguns, also purchased from the tech center. This power is 100% situational. It costs 33% of your unit's hit points, but grants a 33% increase in rate of fire. It's definitely worth using if you're near repair drones, be they on a mobile repair transport rig or war factory, but it's also a smart move if your mammoths and titans are outnumbered and you want to quickly eliminate a few key enemy units before your own forces are decimated. 
The support power also benefits our Guardian cannons and rigs, which can be repaired like normal buildings. Many argue Guardian cannons with railguns and railgun accelerators are even better than sonic emitters for their improved single target damage and lower power usage. If you don't have repair drones around and you've researched adaptive armor, try activating it while using the accelerators. You'll only take about 15% of your hit points and damage, and your rate of fire will still be increased, though slightly less, due to the armor. Plus, you'll be immune to EMPs. So remember, on its own, this power is a gamble, but with the repair drones or adaptive armor, it's almost always worth it. For more great tips like this one, head on over to GameReplays.org. Oh, and by the way, our friends at GameReplays.org are hosting a major 128-player tournament May 17th with over $500 in prizes sponsored by EA, SteelSeries, and GameReplays.org. Signups are open to everyone, but spots fill up fast, so be sure to register ASAP. The final match will be part of the next Battlecast primetime. Register at GameReplays.org slash Kane's Wrath. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight's edition of Command School, so try out some of your peer strategies or develop your own, check out our Battlecast system, and try your hand at commentating. Send your replays to commandschool at ea.com and tell us your thoughts on David's surprise victory at the Command & Conquer TV forum. Dev tested, player approved, this is Command School. For Command & Conquer TV, I'm Greg Kasavi.